Hey there, everybody. Let's talk some baseball. So up front, this video is not for most people. <laughs> this video is for a select group of people. You can check this box and this video might be for you. Are you interested in learning how to create a sports betting and projection model in Microsoft Excel for baseball? If you are, you, I'd recommend using the framework that I have built in the MLB algorithm to take that as a base for you to generate your own supplemental model on top of this um, to make it even better because I don't spend all summer doing it. It's just not my sport and it's very labor intensive. So this video is going to show what's going on. I'm, I'm getting ready to roll the file forward from last year being 2023 into 2024. I know those of you that have been requesting this uh, and wanting MLB spring training is going on and there's enough information now to start building projections. So I'm going to explain in this video what I'm doing to certain sheets and I'm going to talk about different elements of this file because it is really extensive. I was, I was looking at it and thinking that of all the algorithms I have, this one is probably the most complicated to update. And it makes sense because it's a sport like baseball. And in baseball, you have an untimed game with a lot of players in a lot of different positions, all adding their own individual elements to a game. And you know, a fantastic picture uh, pitcher will will lead to a team that uh, has a much better chance of winning frequently because the pitcher is so dominating. Also, the location of the games and the type of weather at the games can impact things like runs. There's a tremendous amount of information you really want to gather to get the best look at everything. And, and we try to do that in here. Uh, and I'm going to go through what's happening. So what I have right now is I have projections for spring training today, which are not working yet. And we're going to try to get this to work before the end of the video. And then, I, and then you'll get to see exactly all the work that I will be doing uh, through spring training to the beginning of the season to get this thing rolling for everyone, because it's, it's, I want to provide you with a product that you can use and then update, but it needs to be current as of when I give it to you. And it requires a lot of work to get it there. And we'll, we'll talk about that in this video, especially if you have a copy of this file yourself and you're trying to roll it forward, you can see the process that I'm going through and, and how you get there. Now you're looking at spring training predictions for uh, Sunday, February 25th. And it's not the entire day, but it's a lot of the games. And you have a bunch of information about these games that you're going to you're gonna use. Time of the game, a projected score, which is all errors right now. Um, we'll, we'll get to fixing that. The money line that's being offered, that's right. You can bet on spring training games. I can't. I'm not betting, but you can. Uh, so you, um, you have those lines. And then you've got a margin, which is an error, pick rank, which is an error, the team, the starting pitcher and stats about the pitcher from last year, because of course we don't have any stats yet for this year. So how do we fix this? Well, first of all, pitchers are a huge element of this file. They're a, a very significant factor. We have five stats, I think six stats that we use that are related to the pitcher. Uh, and then, you know, another five or five for uh, other categories that are still one's pitcher related, but it's bullpen. Uh, but a lot, we, we put a lot of uh, relevance in the outcome of the game on the starting pitcher and the number of innings that pitcher usually goes. So we have to have information on all the pitchers. You'll see that there are a few errors here. There's an error for Chicago White Sox, Jonathan Cannon. We don't have any stats for him. So you'll have to add him to the pitcher sheet when this happens, when we get new pitchers. We're going to put him down here, and we're just going to give him somebody else's stats. We're not even going to care about getting it right at this point because it's spring training, and we're going to, we're going to call this, uh, you know, sample. And the reason why I'm calling it sample is when you go back to the matchup sheet now, we're not going with his 2023 20, stats. We're going with sample. And this tells you where we're getting the pitcher stats for the starting pitcher. So we provide a sample of somebody else's stats completely, but we don't care. We just want to fill this in so we can get rid of our errors. 
Another picture we need to add is Tyler Beatty on Cleveland. Not Tanner Beatty, Tyler Beatty. Tyler Beatty. <laughs> and we're also going to call his a sample. We replaced some other Cleveland pitcher who had a very similar initials. And that will fix that. Now all of a sudden we have projections. Apparently the Dodgers win 10 to 1. Uh, of course, none of this means anything because it's spring training. But we do have predictions. And this is really, this is basically, um, you, know, you get a look of the MLB algorithm and you refresh this pivot and you're supposed to get the picks in order. Uh, a lot of good comments about the MLB algorithm. I mean, no algorithm wins all the time. Um, every day you can't do that, but you can certainly do better than average. And I'd say the algorithm does, does at least that. I, I haven't tracked it enough to really give you specific answers, but of course it does good things when it, it's gathering all the information it needs to gather. So yeah, big, you know, Cubs and Dodgers, huge margins here. Milwaukee is a big margin. Uh, anyway, it gives you the, the picks in order, gives you a projected runs so the teams would have the whole deal, right? So that would be great if all of the underlying statistics were accurate for all of these teams and players. They are somewhat accurate related to last year is what they are. And what has to happen now, and you know, I'll get you started in this video, but I'll obviously be doing a lot of this on my own, uh, is to update the matrix, which has every player's name and their current team, hopefully. And also it has their abbreviated name that shows up on Rotowire on the lineup sheet. Because you end up grabbing the lineups from Rotowire every day and you paste them into the lineup sheet, which is here. You paste them right here and you refresh this pivot and you start to get information about every team and every lineup and you get to see where we have errors, where we, we have either people on the wrong team or the wrong initial for their name, or they don't even exist in our database at all. Like this guy, Hellman. Hellman on Minnesota is probably a you know rookie trying out or something. Now, what are we gonna do with that guy? How are we gonna get him into the sheet? We're gonna have to add him or update him. His abbreviated name is this. He's on, what was it, Milwaukee or Minnesota? Did I get it wrong? Minnesota. He's on Minnesota. And now we need to find out, well, what is his full name in the system? And if you don't already have a big list that you're comparing to, it's Michael Hellman. This is the way they record his name. We take that, we put that in here. And while he probably won't have you, he doesn't have any real stats because he probably didn't play at all last year. But now at least we fixed all our errors for this player. So throughout spring training, as they bring in rookies and as we identify people that have been traded, we go through and we edit every single one of these people. Like these are probably all people that got traded. Like Jared Young probably got, probably got traded because he's in the list, but he wasn't on St. Louis. Let's check. Jared Young is still on St. Louis. Interesting. I don't know why he's showing up as an error there then. Let's see. His player team combo is missing. It means we can't find him. He's just not in the matrix. That's, that's all. He's just not in the matrix because he started playing probably after I stopped up updating this file last year. That's probably what happened. So we need to add Jared Young. Oh, he does already exist. Wait a minute, why? I don't get it. Where are you, Jared? Oh, we had him on the Cubs. No, he must, he did get traded. Oh, he's currently on, <clears throat> sorry. If we looked at his, uh, his history, yeah, he was on the Cubs last year. Whoops, he told you, he was traded. So we update his team here, and we're going to do that for all these players in the matrix as well. There's a quicker way to do this in aggregate to do all the players and all teams, and that is to go to Rotowire and to pull the projections for um, the full season projections for these players for this year. This list, which we will use, will uh, run a check and see all the current projections for these players, and we're going to put them on the right team with a V lookup.
and that will fix a lot of people. But there's still going to be a ton of these rookies that don't exist in the system yet that you have to grab that may, may play at some point throughout the year. And then once we do all these players, and there's going to be new ones every day as we do this, then we need to update the pitcher stats to look at just last year being 2023 on top. Let me show you quickly how we are going to do that. So here are all the 2023 pitching stats. We're pasting them over our old stats, which said 2022 over here, because last year in the 2023 file, we were looking at prior season, which was 2022 at the time, and then current season 2023 as the season occurred. Well, now we're 2023 going into 2024. And so we've now overlaid our 2023 stats and all these other ones we don't need anymore, except for the two at the bottom, which I just added today so that we could get our projections for the spring training game. So we're going to leave the two at the bottom there, Tyler BD and Cannon. The rest of these will be filler that we can use when we need to add pitchers um, into the file here. And they will they will become, you know, our 2023 sample essentially. Or we'll, or or so as we add pitchers, which we will have to do, we'll put stats in here. And we could always look in the history and get the correct pitching stats for these pitchers. I would do that if it mattered and it wasn't spring training. I, I would go ahead and do that. But as for what I'm going to be doing today is going through updating uh all the players, get the pitchers correct. If there are pitchers that were on two different teams, uh, or, yeah, they got traded throughout the year, which is going to happen with some of these pitchers. We're going to combine the two uh, stats from the two or, or three teams on some occasion and get uh, aggregate cumulative stats for 2023 in one line. So we'll add the wins together, add the losses, add the innings pitched and everything, but we'll average the ERA and the whip. I believe we need to do a weighted average on those. And that will give you a, a full season look at each pitcher, which will be used as reference in, in the projections for the season uh, to start. Now, a cool thing about this file is that it does have some automatic data connections that I believe work. And, and I guess they're not behind a paywall or something for baseball, which is why this works. The team stats are not automatically connected. You need to fetch those automatically. But the batters and pitchers actually are automated here. So when you refresh this data connection, it brings in the current pitching and the current uh, batting stats. That's what's in this query up here. Uh, it does work and hopefully it'll work for you as well. It is within these queries here. There's the player basic. And what we will do is we will change this to 2024 when 2024 is available. And I believe it will update automatically uh, as the source link is right here in the RotoWire. Let's take a look. It, oh, no, it does say 2023. So 2024 will exist at some point, and we will change this right here to 2024, but it won't work yet. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what happens if we do this. Let's see if we break this. Let's try 2024 right now. And no, it doesn't. It's, so it's not even in existence yet because it doesn't match a parameter. That makes sense. As soon as the game starts, they will add that. But this thing's really cool because uh, basically it um, it does fetch the player and batter stats automatically, which then feed into another table here that you use. It's, it's connected by a formula. And so you do just get to press refresh on those two every day, but you still have to pay some other ones. Team pitching and advanced team batting. These are still manual. I couldn't get the data connection to work on those or for some reason. That's under stats team stats, it's these four. And you paste those in here. When the season starts, you paste them here and here, and then here and here. And that, and that gives you 2024 and 2023 stats, which are relevant. Why? Because we have the ability to, um, 
view the projections by whatever year is here. So if we want to look at this by 2024 projections, things will change automatically when we get 2024 stats in there. Very helpful at the beginning of the year when you're comparing what projections would be based on last year's full season stats versus the very limited current season stats. Uh, excellent, excellent thing to do here. So this algorithm really has a lot of cool things built in. Uh, and uh, I, know I can see why the comments are positive about this one um, across the board. So all that being said, I am going to get to updating matrixing names and getting lineups somewhat accurate and this thing comprised more so that later this week, we can just paste the odds in uh, and refresh and we'll get better looks at an accurate roster of who's, who's what. Because the lineup factor is what's calculating the contribution of all your batters we can see we're missing a ton of people on San Diego and a ton of people on Colorado because their lineup factor is almost nothing. This lineup factor needs to be around between high to something like 2.8 to about five is what the lineup factor can range to. Teams with a lineup factor four point something have a very strong offense. Uh, so everybody's missing players, obviously, because look, look at the mess that's in the lineup sheet and look at all this pink here. This is, this is, Adjustments need to be made all over the place. And it's going to look like that uh, all the way up until the start of the season. And then by like the third or fourth day of the season, this starts to look a little bit more reasonable. You only get a couple of errors and new, new changes every day. Something you need to watch for every day, though. I mean, baseball, man, it's, it's, it's as bad as soccer when it comes to roster changes and people getting signed and people getting called up and just pictures all over the place. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's an ongoing thing. And that's just why I, you know, I don't do it every day. It's, it's not, it's not healthy. You have to be some kind of major baseball fan to, uh, to really want to engage in this on a daily basis. And while you don't need to update it every day, uh, you, you can pick this thing up. You can take a break for a month, come back and try this thing when the season is a month or two old and just start dumping in the stats just like we did. You're going to have a lot of players to adjust and you're going to have a lot of errors in your matrix that you're going to need to fix uh, because there are going to be roster changes during that month long period that you don't update it. But you will be able to make the changes. And, and I usually do come in every once in a while and run one because it's been a while just to see what it does. Uh, because the interesting thing about this is if I, I don't spend my time working on this, like I do with college basketball um, or football, a sport that I'm really on top of as it's going on, um, this one, because I leave it out there, there's so much you can do with this. And it, it's also got a macro for testing stuff. So you can run a macro and test results to get distribution percentages, which we have here, just like the uh, NBA file and the uh, NBA file, both do that. This is more like the NBA file in that it'll run and test combinations to see what uh, distribution of stats did the best throughout the year. It's very helpful in baseball. There, there's a lot that can be done with this. So, you know, I was, I was offered a bunch of money to, to kind of lease this to to a sportsbook provider uh years ago and they were like how much money would you take to just you know not do your videos and not not sell your algorithm to anybody else and just do it and just give you know if i could buy the rights to it for for the whatever and i was like i don't know man i was like i, I want I want the ability to teach people how to use this information and i certainly don't want to dedicate the, the kind of time like to make a full-time job out of monitoring baseball. It's just, it's just not a sport. I enjoy watching all that much and it takes forever. I know they change the rules and put a pitch clock in there. It doesn't matter. It still takes forever. It's because, because of the no time limit. I mean, a sport that you watch that has no time limit means that you need to have all the time in the world to pay attention to it. That's the way I look at it. Sometimes you do. I mean, sometimes there are lazy summer days and you got nothing going on and, and, there's a lot of betting that can be done and it's, it's for the people that love numbers. I totally understand that part of it. It's gotta be, gotta enjoy it though. I mean, my grandpa, 
Uh, I built this algorithm for him. Um, he's, he's since passed on, but he, I, you know, I built it for him many years ago just to go over his picks and to you know understand what was going on and be knowledgeable about baseball because we sat and we watched a lot of baseball, something that we did that he really enjoyed. And he was always complaining that nobody bunts anymore to move a player over. Everybody's swinging and striking out for no reason, and they should be bunting. He had his strong opinions as a as a lifelong baseball fan. So I understand there are those of you out there, and uh, I, I wish you the best. It is certainly something to do. So if you want to get into this, there will be a series of videos showing in depth how to update it and the process we go through to get it rolling. But understand it is an undertaking. Uh, I, it's, it's, it, it is extensive and you can really spend as much time as you want to with it, keeping it updated throughout the day and throughout the season. It, it never makes you feel satisfied that there's, there's not more you can do. There are people that ask me, Hey, can you build in wind and weather? You know, like, so that the answer is I did that in a Google sheet actually previously. Uh, I, I have since lost that Google sheet. I think I deleted it and you'd have to have a copy to still have it. I'd have to rewrite the formulas, but it took into account humidity when the propensity of there to be long balls at that stadium by comparing the stadiums and average offense in each stadium uh, it did a bunch of stuff. I just found that it, it was so reliant on the most current temperature and wind, which kept, you know, wind changes that you'd sometimes get a distorted view of the game because you'd have a strong wind factor in or out or something like that. And, and then the wind changed or something for the whole game. And it, so I found that it was too much work for very limited to no benefit. So it's one of those where I feel like you need to watch the game to understand how the weather might impact the score. This is a raw average score based on just, you know, the team playing at home or away and the players and the pitching. That, that's really what it's doing here. And sometimes it does amazing things. That's the way the algorithm is. So if you want to copy the MLB algorithm, you will, you'll get some updates from me. I'm going to make a separate product purchase for MLB because it's different from just a raw algorithm. You want more than you want more than just a $59 copy of this. You want the the recurring copies of it that I send out through the period of time into into April uh until it's until we're comfortable, you know, toggling between 23 and 2024 stats and it looks good in both in both uh years. That's really when I could stop updating this and you can take it on your own. But until then, there's a lot of, oh boy, there's a lot of specialty stuff I do to this, try to get it to be right. But there's a lot of value actually early in the season. I'd say that the part of the season historically that I remember it doing the best is the earliest in the season. Uh, it picks up on changes between teams and from one year to the other, it picks up on them very quickly and um, gives you an interesting look at stuff. So that's the MLB update. As you can see, there's a lot of work to do. I'll put some links in the description, set up, a, I'll say $150 subscription will get you through mid-April where I will be sending emails very frequently, probably daily um, for this. Oh gosh, it's tax time too then. Uh, I, I'm not gonna say daily, but I will send updates as this thing gets updated from now through mid-April till, till it's ready to go. That's what the $150 will uh, will cover. And then um, you can get going and, and ask me questions along the way. But then after that point, it's gonna be yours. Think tax time and then the MLB algorithm is all yours after tax time for the rest of the season. All right, enjoy your baseball. May all your picks be winning. Go to KenBraverman.com if you'd like to purchase a copy of any of the algorithms, including the baseball algorithm.